G'day everyone. So I have been missing in action for a little while. Sorry about that. Um, I haven't fallen off the face of the planet. I just kind of fell into a bit of a hole for a month or two. So the last little while has been stressful. And so for me, when I get either overwhelmed or sad, I tend to withdraw. I tend to isolate and pull back and disengage as part of how I cope with that stuff. I'm not saying that that is healthy um, or functional, but it's part of what I do. And one of the biggest symptoms that maybe things are not great and I need to start taking that quite seriously and begin evasive maneuvers is when I stop getting out of bed. So when I sleep way too much or am awake but stay in bed and just go up into my own head, into my own brain and spend a bunch of time there rather than coming out into the actual real world. And so that's part of how I cope with stuff. And I have been doing that and I have of course noticed that and so I probably should try to stop doing it. So I was scrolling on social media about, I don't know, a handful of days ago and a post came up from somebody and he was talking about how he uh, had been taught by his therapist that sometimes he had to do the opposite of what the voice in his head was saying. And for the life of me, I can't remember whether his voice was a depression voice or an anger voice or like what he called it, but it was some kind of dysfunctional or what he considered dysfunctional and his therapist also. Some dysfunctional, this is not a great coping strategy sort of impulse and he called it a voice and the healthy therapy tactic was to, when it tells you to do white, you do black. And I found that an interesting sort of take on things and so I've decided to do that in this video and I did that for a day on Saturday. So Friday night, I I just sat on my laptop for about five minutes maybe and came up with a list of things I could do throughout the day to keep me occupied so that I was up and out of bed and engaged in something in the external world. And so I've made a video about it. I don't know if this will be helpful for anybody or it's just helpful for me to do at the moment. But if you've gone through something or you're going through something, like I think a bunch of us just aren't thriving at the moment. The environment is such that a bunch of us are struggling. If this helps, that's great. If you've been through something and you've done this, maybe it will resonate with you. And if you have any tips or tricks about what you do to try to stay engaged and stay positive during negative times, I'm happy to read about those. If you want to share them, that would be great. So the first thing on my list of things to do is actually just get up and get out of bed, which is probably pretty obvious, but a big task to complete um, from the list. The second thing that I put down on the list to do that I thought would be helpful is to actually open the blinds and open some windows to get some fresh air and some sunlight in. That's probably going to help, I don't know, circadian rhythms. No, I'm not a doctor, but it's probably going to have some sort of beneficial effect. I think that's probably pretty evident. The third thing I thought I could do was to just put on some pretty light, easygoing music, um, something soothing, something calming. Um, I am not an audiophile, so I can't guide you too much in what to listen to. I just found a random playlist on Spotify that I thought sounded okay and that had some familiar songs and that's what I played. The fourth thing I thought I should do is to start eating and one of the things I do when I'm down is I stop eating and so good task for me to complete. Also if anything is going to get me excited in this world it's probably going to be food. I love food, it's one of my favorite things on the planet and so if I'm going to move out of apathy and disengagement and into positivity and excitement and enthusiasm it's probably going to have something to do with food or something like that. So cooking is a good idea for me and so I'm going to make a healthy breakfast. So I had some fruit sitting around that I'd had for a little while. Um, I had bought it with the best of intentions to eat and then not bothered. So, so I had a candy melon, some kiwi fruits and an orange. And I just spent about 10 minutes just chopping all of that up and prepping it so that I could eat it today and in the future. It's a good task to do when you're sort of drained and out of it and just not terribly enthusiastic because it's not very demanding, sort of repetitive, sort of relaxing. And so I'm gonna try and do tasks like that this whole video where I'm just trying to do tasks that help give me a little bit of momentum. Once everything was chopped and ready I just served that with some yogurt and some muesli and then I sat down in the lounge room and started looking up comedy specials and that's going to be a big thing that I'm going to do today. I think probably it's going to be quite a good thing for me to do to try and find things that make me laugh 
rather than things that are heavy and emotionally draining and taxing. So the first special I watched was one by Dara O'Brien. I genuinely do not know if that is supposed to be up on YouTube or not. I did not put it there, but I did watch it. Um, and sorry about that if I wasn't supposed to. And it was great. He always is really good. Now the fifth thing I decided to do, and it was one of the big tasks I wanted to do for the day, was to actually leave the house. I very quickly made a pretty basic shopping list of healthy foods that I could go to buy to make myself some more food. And I headed out to grab some groceries. Now, I don't know what the laws are around filming in local produce stores and grocery stores. I don't know if I need their permission to do that. So I didn't film any of that, but I wound up coming home with two small boxes, one of fruit and one of dry goods and a bag of potatoes. So I've got plenty of supplies ready to go so that I can keep eating some healthy food um, and at least take care of myself physically while I'm in a bit of a funk. So the next task for me to do was just to make myself some healthy lunch and I picked out a less than basic cream of veggie soup. It would take up a little bit of my time, but the ingredients are all pretty familiar. So I should be able to prep this fairly well, I hope. The first thing you have to do is make this green chili paste, which you just make in a blender or a food processor. And then you just chop up all the veggies and fry them up in a saucepan. And then you add some veggie broth and you boil that for about uh, 15 to 20 minutes until everything has softened. Now, while I was waiting for the veggies to cook, I stayed in the kitchen and did some cleanup. And I do this because it is an absolutely terrible idea for me to wander out of the kitchen and get distracted by something. I will lose track of time and I will get distracted and forget that I have something sitting on the stove. When I cook, I need to stay with the food and monitor it. I have been in this house maybe three or four months and I have already filled the place with smoke because I wandered away from some veggies that were on the stove and they boiled down until there was no water left in the pot and then they stuck to the pot and started to burn. So good for me to stay in the room. Once all the veggies have softened, you just add some coconut and you add the chili paste. And then I added two bok choy. That's a pretty common veggie in Australia. I don't know about other places, but we're pretty close to Asia. So bok choy is something that we eat a bit. I will grant you that my soup doesn't look fantastic. It's a kind of an, an unattractive yellowy brown, but it did taste really good. I was super impressed that I was actually able to make something like this, but I think it's the chili paste that gives it a whole bunch of flavor. When I make it again, I will probably add udon noodles. I think that would be a really good addition, but I was pretty happy and a little bit proud that I made something that tasted half decent. Now, while I'm gonna eat my lunch, I will sit on the couch again and watch some more comedy specials. Now, I think in the end, I wound up watching Nick Offerman. He had a special that was up and Matteo Lane. And they were both great. Again, I like both of these people, so I enjoyed the specials. Now, I was supposed to make some dinner, but I just wasn't terribly hungry for the rest of the day. So I wound up skipping dinner. And so the food that you've already seen me eat was all the food I ate for the day. Now, next thing on the list of things to do is just some basic self-care and self-hygiene. So I jumped into the shower, gave my hair a wash, brushed my teeth, did all the things you're supposed to do um, to take care of yourself. Now I did blow dry my hair, which is an extra step that maybe not everybody's up for doing when they're a little bit down, but my hair is very curly and so I tend to straighten it. I blow dry it straight. But again, this is a repetitive, not particularly mentally taxing task that I can do that keeps me busy, keeps me occupied, keeps me up and going and out of bed. And that's the main point of everything that I'm doing today. Once all of that was done, the day was pretty much over. It wound up going pretty quick, even though I didn't get a lot done, but this level of productivity, given my mood, I'm pretty okay with. Like I said, it was not my intention to tax myself with sort of a whole bunch of high productivity tasks. It was just to get through the day, just to keep myself up, out of my own brain, <laughs> and engaged in the world around me. I wound up going to bed at around nine. It's so pretty early probably for a lot of people, but I was up for a good sort of 12 to 13 hours, which is not a huge amount, but good enough for now. I will try and keep this going, try to keep the momentum going and stay up and stay engaged. But thank you for watching. I hope you're doing okay and I will see you on the next one. Bye.